In the previous episode, we did some fine work on getting ourselves set up for killing bosses right at the beginning of Calamity as a summoner. I'm really happy about this. Um, we got our full wolf room armor, which seems pretty rad, and we got our two little drones. However, however, there's more that we can do. There's a lot more that we can do. First off, um, there is a item right here, Spirit Glyph, that we can, uh, we can get. It's called... Uh, the Spirit Glyph, it, it does, whenever your minions hit an enemy, you will gain a random buff. These buffs will either boost your defense, summon damage, or life regen for a while. That sounds super duper good. It requires five diamonds and 15 iron bars. We're going to need diamonds, so actually, I think that's a pretty lofty thing to go for. Uh, let's go ahead and just research all that. And I don't think that I have, oh, I'm going to need health potions, right? Let's just get potions set up so that way I don't forget about those. Um, let's see here. Get rid of that. Diamond? No, we don't have any diamonds. So, uh, or ruby. Ruby? No, no rubies. Okay, so we're going to have to get that stuff. But at the same time, there's a couple other things that we can set up for before we just go start killing bosses. I think we could actually just kill the King Slime and the Desert Scourge and maybe the Eye of Cthulhu with what we got. But I kind of want to... You, you know, I don't really want to just push through the mod as quickly as possible. I, I kind of want to enjoy this playthrough. I'm sure you guys want to enjoy this playthrough. Your your comments are amazing. I love your hype for that first episode. And now we're jumping in fresh. And I think what I want to do is go right. Why right? Well, left is our snow biome. You know what right is? Our jungle. There's a few really cool jungle items that we can get. I think there's a summon. Uh, obviously, we can make a snap thorn. Like there, there's a bunch of really good stuff we can get right off the bat for summoner um, that will significantly help our progress. So I think that's going to be our goal for today is, is dive into the, the jungle and then maybe kill the king slime and the desert scourge. We'll see how far we get. I've, I've, you know, I'm ready. Oh, there's where I died yesterday. By the Wolfram Rover. Let's just get rid of tombstones. The, the thing is, I want to research them because I want a graveyard biome at one point. Oh. Interesting. Should I, should I go down? Should we do that later? We'll do that later. We're gonna we're gonna do the desert biome and all that stuff, and we're gonna try to set up a arena here where we can fight the desert scourge. Thankfully, our desert goes straight into an oasis, so that gives us some extra space. And then right to the crimson. Oh man, I hate the crimson so much. I hate the just the infection spread, which actually is gonna be something that we're not gonna worry about. And as soon as I get to hard mode, I'm actually going to turn spreading off for the infection. It just is going to be a little bit easier for me. In fact, you know what? I, why not just do it now? I think that's a better way to do it. I, I think that as a personal preference, it's going to sound kind of weird, but I don't think that the infection should, one, spread as fast as it does, or two, that you should have an option of turning it off in standard play as well, because... I think it's just kind of dumb. I, mean, it's, I just hate it. I hate it so much. I hate, I, I can't talk. I hate having to cleanse it. I hate having to do all that stuff. It's, it's just very agitating. And yeah, so I'm just not going to worry about it. I think what the best thing for us to do is just turn it off for now. And, and if you get a bunch of outcry in the comments and you guys are like, no, you should have it turned on, then maybe I'll turn it back on. But at the moment, we're just going to keep it off. Things are so much easier to kill now that we have a whip. Oh my goodness. It's nice. I feel a little bit more proactive. That was the thing with uh, with Calamity Summoner before, is you just kind of sat there and let your minions do the work. And, you know, with, with the addition of whips, I feel like, you know, Summoner is more proactive. It feels a little bit better. Uh, this is a, a strange thing that happens in Diablo, where in Diablo 2, you have your Necromancer, and you could play like the army Necromancer, where you've got like a bunch of skeletons and golem and a bunch of other really cool stuff that you've got going on. Um, and you do feel like a like a commander of the dead. It's a lot of fun. But, big but, you're literally just sitting there watching your minions do stuff a lot of the time. And that's not great. So, the way that they fixed that in Diablo 3 when they added the Necromancer is they made it so your, your, um, your, your companions, whatever you want to call them, your minions, um, when you have them summoned and you use the ability again, it commands them to do something, whether that be attack the target or in like the golem's case, um, it like jumps in an area and has a big effect that it does. Like it's really cool. So I feel like, um, I feel like the whips accomplish a bit of that. 
where it's like, okay, I'm not just sitting around waiting for my dudes to do stuff. I'm, I'm actively participating. And to me, I, I think that's an important part of being a summoner is, is not just feeling like I have just an army. It's also that I am the commander of said army. You know, I'm not, I am not the minion to my army. My minions are my minions, you know? So I have a little bit of a tip for people who are jumping into Terraria, maybe fresh or new, and you just, you know, haven't played in a while, or maybe you're like me, and when it gets to hard mode and you get life fruit from the jungle, you're just like, I hate finding that. I, I noticed that if I don't dig straight down like I normally do and I'm spelunking and instead I go left and right and then I follow the natural caves down as they are spawned, um, I, I give myself a much easier time in hard mode because doing a horizontal tunnel like this, it allows me to, when hard mode starts, uh, get, or not right when hard mode starts, but when, um, uh, when the, the mechanical bosses are dead, which by the way, Calamity has a whole rebalancing of how that stuff works, which is really nice. Actually, I like it quite a lot, but w when you get the, the life fruit to start growing, if you have a horizontal cavern like this, uh, it, it just grows in this and it's way easier to just jump down and, and find a bunch of, uh, life fruit that way. It's just a little tip. Instead of taking straight up and down in the jungle, if you go left and right, you actually, you know, make hard mode a, a little bit easier for you later on. Oh my goodness, I just got screwed by bats. <laughs> oh, oh, wow, nighttime looks awesome. Oh, I like this. We need a bunch of stars. Let's collect a bunch of stars while we're at this. Oh, that's way better. I'll tell you what. Um, playing a normal playthrough where it's nighttime and you just really can't see anything, not as fun. Not as fun for viewers either because you're just like running from one side of the world to the other and it's like completely pitch black. Viewers are like, especially on mobile, are like, I can't see anything. Do something about that. Well, look, now I have. I got this cool little mod that makes nighttime way more atmospheric. In fact, it's part of the reasons why I want uh, a graveyard biome is because I think it'll be really cool with this mod, especially at night. So I'm looking forward to that. And then on top of that, uh, probably between this episode and the next one, I'm going to start doing some builds. So I'll do maybe a desert build. Uh, my previous few playthroughs, I've done stuff on the, the surface of the desert, but I actually might do something kind of underground this time. I think it'd be kind of cool. Maybe, maybe like, uh, oh goodness, I don't, I don't know how, how many nerds this is going to scratch the itch for, but kind of like a, a, a weird version of the, uh, the hideouts that the Fremen use. <laughs> On, on for Axis, I, or not for Axis, for Axis, for Axis, there we go. I'm thinking of the company that makes XCOM, no, Araxis, which that's all a giant Dune reference. If you don't, if you've never read Dune, you should read Dune. If you've never watched the movie, read the book first, uh, because man, there's so many cool little tiny things that, that uh, are in the movie that you don't pick up on unless you have read the book and you, you know about the dramatic irony that happens at the beginning and, and everything. It's just like, it's really, really good in that book. That first Dune book, like I said, fantastic. Definitely recommend it. And then go watch the movie if you haven't. And if you've watched the movie, go read the book. The book is great. Anyways, we're going to do like a weird, <laughs> yeah, like, um, I forgot what they're called, uh, but just like, like underground hideout for the Fremen, I think. Our summons have such a hard time underground here. It's it's really kind of messing me up because they don't really want to attack anything because um, they're constantly stuck in the wall. That's another reason to be here because there are um, I don't remember what they're called. Honestly, we just got life crystal. Um, it it was like bell something or other, but we want that specific. Actually, let's let's look at it. Let's see if I'm even on uh, right about this. It's this like from past calamity knowledge uh there it is belladonna spirit staff it's only five summon damage but it's way better than it seems and we just need vines spores and stingers so you know that's that's actually fairly doable although i want to keep an eye out for a jungle rose i don't remember if they're necessary in calamity to have but uh, you know ever since playing fargo's i'm like you know what anything could be a material so i'm just gonna keep an eye out just in case it's a material for something later on in the game. Like, look at this. My summons just aren't doing anything. They just, they don't know what to do. They're like, is that a guy that we need to fight? Like, yes, please, please get in there and fight him. Here, let's, 
Put a squirrel down there. Squirrel <laughs> help us out a little bit. That's a lot better. My poor drones. They're just so lost. What do we get? Angle of the wind. Actually, that is not a bad thing to get right now. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll get this. We'll do that. And uh, maybe I should kill these man eaters in order to get some uh, vines. You know, one thing I wanted to chat about is that there is so much good stuff on TV at the moment. And I don't mean like on TV, like whoever watches just like cable television more, but I mean like Netflix and Disney Plus and uh, even Amazon Prime, like all this stuff or Prime Video rather has such good crap on it. And it's unfortunate because like I like watching that stuff. Me and my wife love just sitting down watching some stuff. However, I've just been so busy and she's taking care of the kids a lot of the time and I just, we just you know it, when it comes to nighttime i'm usually recording so we don't really have an opportunity to sit down there's a bee biome down there i gotta remember that um however we've been slowly working our way even though like rings of power is out and the the house of the dragon is out we, we haven't caught up on that stuff but we've been slowly working our way through stranger things um season four and i'll tell you what we just finished it tonight and oh boy that was good I'm a huge Stranger Things fan. Um, it's one of those shows that just kind of speaks to me. It's, it's got the humor, but it also has a lot of scares in it. And I'm totally down for that. Like, I, I hate playing scary games, but for whatever reason, I, I like watching a scary movie every now and then. And that first season of Stranger Things is just terrifying, actually. Um, or maybe I'm remembering it to be terrifying because I had gotten a uh, wisdom tooth out when we sat down and started watching the very first season. <laughs> so that might have had something to do with the uh, with the jump scares in that one. But, but season two and three, not so much. Season four, disturbing. Oh man, it's a, it's a creepy, creepy season. And the end, I'm not gonna spoil anything. I'm not that guy, I'm not gonna you know, ruin a, a show that I think everybody should watch. But what I will say is, uh, Kate Bush and Metallica, are, are a really good way to create epic moments. <laughs> if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, though, and this is this is coming from a, a creator's point of view, right? So you gotta keep that in mind. I, I, I tend to be quite critical of the stuff that I watch because I understand a bit of the process of what goes into making it. And to me, to me, and this, again, this is all just a very subjective thing. Kind of felt like the like season four could have been edited down quite a lot. There was a lot of unnecessary stuff, like a lot of really long, oh my goodness, I can't believe I just died of that. Really long, unnecessary slow motion bits or a dialogue that's like really spaced out where, you know, like people are talking very dramatically <laughs> you're like I, this is, I mean, you're, not, you're not selling it to me right now this doesn't seem it doesn't seem real <laughs> people don't talk like this and i get that you know it's a tv show and whatnot but the moment they take you out of it the moment they take you out of it and you go eh, maybe i'm not believing this right now that's that's when they lose you and there's a couple moments like that in this season that i just felt like were, um, they would have been really cool if I was in the moment with it, but because of whatever context it was in or like, uh, you know, but, but it, okay, here's a really good non-spoiler example in season four. Uh, there, there is a place that the kids keep going back to that, uh, that something had happened at and the police who are searching for somebody should be scoping this place out like on a constant basis because it's like well this is clearly a point of interest right we need to <laughs> we need to keep a, a dispatch here we need to keep somebody here just to be like oh hey have the kids come back to this spot right and at multiple points in that final season the kids go back there and you're like why isn't there a police officer here why hasn't anybody thought to be like you know we're looking for these people where should we find them? 
you know, maybe the place that they keep going back to. I just, I don't know. They're like, there's just like little tiny plot holes like that that took me out of the moment. I'm like, I'm not believing this. I'm not believing this. Which meant that those moments of like a uh, uh, bad guy monologues and whatnot, they just didn't land. It's just like the, the person is talking so slow. Like, I'm totally not into this. But all of that, null and void. Because Kate Bush and Metallica are just the best ways to generate hype, especially when it's like re oh or, or also Journey can't forget about Journey, especially when it's like re um, re envisioned versions of the songs that they use for like background music. Oh, it's so epic! I love when they do stuff like that. Like like for real, you can give me a person slow motion walking through a, a, a grocery store picking up groceries, and if it's down to like one of those remixed songs where it's kind of got like a it's a slower tempo but it's like way more epic and it's got like big drums and like a like a, a whole orchestra behind it you're like yes like this is amazing i think i mentioned this in the fargo soul mod series as well because of just timing of, of how things were coming out for that series but i'm also a huge star wars fan love star wars um i don't i don't love all of it i think that there are parts that are you know could be improved however I I was playing through Jedi Fallen Order, which I did on the channel, and I thought that it was one of the better series that I've done ever. So if you're interested in that and you've never seen that game, I highly recommend it. It was It's such a good series. There's a lot of really cool stuff in there, especially if you happen to be even moderately a fan of Star Wars. And it all connects. It's all canonical stuff that goes into, like, the shows and whatnot. So, like, the... Uh, like the Obi-Wan show, like there's there's references to stuff that happens and oh, it's so good. It's just so good. I, I, I love that kind of stuff. Anyway, so the game uh, is freaking phenomenal. And I was like, you know what? I've never watched, I've never watched Clone Wars because I always kind of was like, uh, it's like a it's like a cartoon series, even though it's canonical stuff that happens in it. I'm like, eh, I'm not, am, I, am I really down to watch this at the moment? I've got like so many other things to watch. Well, I finally sat down and watched through all seven seasons. I'll tell you what, first season sucks, but the rest of it is really good. Um, in particular, uh, there's a there's an Ahsoka storyline that I think is really good. I can't spoil it. I, I really can't. I just I don't have it in me. I just want you guys to watch it if you haven't seen Clone Wars. And then like the whole final season is just fantastic. And gives you a really good perspective on on the story of the clones and everything. Love it. And then I dove straight into like I went right from Clone Wars into the Bad Batch, which the Bad Batch follows a bad batch of clones. They're like genetically modified clones and they're like hyper soldiers. They're really awesome. Um, in fact, if you've ever played Star Wars Republic Commando, fantastic game, much older now. I really wish that they would remake it or do something with it because it's it's a great game. Transformational, I would say, in a lot of ways. Um, then, yeah, I, th I, I think that if you like that, you'll, you will love the Bad Batch. It's like everything that you want. Um, and now I finished the Bad Batch because it only has one season, although the second season is on its way. And now I'm watching... Uh, Rebels, Star Wars Rebels. And I think it's the first season is very okay. It's what I'm on at the moment. I'm slowly working my way through it. But that's all to say, like, man, I got so much good TV to watch at the moment. And I just don't got time to watch it. It sucks. It really sucks. Same with games. I got so many good games at the moment that I want to play. And I just haven't had time to play them. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I can't believe I just died of that stupid poison trap. Ah, that sucks. We still need 21 more stingers. Oh, this is like going this is going fairly slow. I'm having a hard time killing things. These these minions aren't really doing it for me. Are there potentially better minions for us to do? Hmm. All right, here's the thing. When it comes to boss checklist, I get a lot of comments to use the boss log instead where oh hey, look. I want to enable progression mode. Progression hides a lot of bosses. Oh, okay. Um no, I, I think I want to continue. Let's let's continue with it disabled. Okay. Uh, here, let's close this because we're going to got to make sure that these stupid doors stay closed. In fact, I'm going to come pick up more stars. Uh, I was like 26. Oh, my goodness. We're not even halfway through that. Oh, man. A glowing worm. I really need to 
build more places so we can get a merchant so we can then get a little what is it called what's the word i'm looking for net bug net there we go so this is what people recommend is use this uh this menu because you're able to find out Ooh, there's a piggy oh my goodness what what's what happens with these zombies so you're able to find out their loot um much easier by doing that and yeah i might i might end up kind of focusing a little bit on using that particular thing because i think that it, it might be beneficial to, to kind of see what we got here instead of looking up on the wiki so like for instance if we back this out to the desert scourge is there a desert scourge summon it doesn't appear so so it's a slightly moist but also slightly dry locket i don't know if i want to know about that dried locket what's that Desert Scourge plushie. Oh, these are probably like, um, oh, there, there is a relic. That's pretty nice that Calamity has added all the relics. I don't think that there's really any summoning stuff from that. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe I just keep trying to get the Belladonna and go from there. <laughs> I literally died to the exact same poison dart trap. No. <laughs> okay, bit of an update here. It's been a while. Since the last time I chatted, I just found the underground, or I didn't just, I found it a few minutes ago. I've been trying to fight my way through random craps that's been attacking me. I have all the stuff that I need in order to make the Belladonna staff. And I also have the stuff that I need to make the snap sword, I believe. I think I've got everything. So we're just sneaking into the, what is it that I need from here? I don't remember. Oh, the, ch the chest is up there. Okay. But we like, we need these, right? Charging stations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's break through these pipes. Can I get that charging station? It's gonna let me. There we go. Just need the one. Okay, so I got a charging station. I don't know what these things are. Oh my goodness. The labs are like, you know, fairly different compared to what they were before. Can I break this? Or do I need a better pickaxe? Oh, no, I can break it. Oh, look at that. That's nifty. Um, so let's get the cell factory. Let's loot all of this. I don't think I can um, do the, uh, whatchamacallit with that. Can't, can't research some of that, which is totally fine. Although, I think it would be really cool to have like a, um, what is that thing? Why is it not damaging me? That is very odd. I don't know why it's not damaging me. Did I like... Is there like a keybind for it? Hold on. Let's let's see. No, I'm definitely taking damage. I don't know why that thing wasn't hurting me. Maybe it's peaceful. All right, we've got everything we need. Um, let's go ahead and do this. And we're going to go back to base with this. Um, we are going to learn. Oh, by the, found a, by the way, I found a jungle rose. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and pop into here. And... Get vines. What else did we need? Vines, jungle spores. Oh, you know what? I don't have. I gotta go get wood real quick. Time for wood. <laughs> I don't know how much of this I actually need. Let's check real quick. Uh, 38. Oh, we just got it. Man, that's nice. I was trying to get as many trees under there as possible. So, yeah, we found the lab and we also found where our. Um, jungle temple is which is really nice because I hate trying to find that stupid thing sometimes it's just super annoying all right so we got the spores got that we need the mahogany and with that it should allow us to make some stuff yeah there we go so we can make the ivy whip oh my goodness I'm so excited the ivy whip is great so that's reach is 25 tiles um interesting that oh Wait, did they change? Is the Ivy Whip a... I thought the Ivy Whip... Oh, no, I'm thinking the Thorn Whip. Snap Thorn, that's what it is. Aha, uh -huh. okay, cool. <laughs> Let's make another Ivy Whip while we're at it, though. And just equip that instead of the Grappling Hook. Um, Yeah, let's make another Snap Thorn. Ooh, let's make another Snap Thorn. Better. Legendary. Heck yes. Get rid of the Wolfram one. Get rid of that. And then we can make the... What am I looking for? The Belladonna. Where is it? Where is the... All right, let's just open this up. There it is. Uh, bam. This is an adept one. Let's see if we can get a little bit better ruthless. 
I mean, I'm not really using the knockback. Yeah, let's let's do that. Okay, so then we can get rid of these guys and go. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I love these little guys. So if you want to see what they do, let's see if we can find an enemy. And uh, you know what? I had diamonds. Oh, I think I researched them. No. No, I didn't want to research them on accident. Mm, I was going to try to kill the king slime, but I can't do that unless I have a slime crown, which requires a platinum crown, which requires diamonds, of which I don't have any. But I'm pretty happy with getting the Belladonna's. Um, I was hoping to have, like, some kind of enemy to fight here, but all, all is peaceful at home, apparently. Yeah, these little guys, if I recall correctly, they can attack through the ground. Um, having the, the snap thorn is going to help our damage quite a lot as well. Oh, they just... Well, they did it off screen. They killed it off screen. They're, they're like a bad rider. Okay, can, can I tell them to attack this? Are they going to come up here and then attack? Yeah, so you see they, they launch like all these little projectiles. It is beautiful for killing things like the desert scourge, which require, you know, it's a worm. And so if you've got, if you got these guys just throwing a bunch of crap out, it's going to hit it, right? So it's really nice. It's really, really nice. Something to consider is maybe we go under the desert next and uh, search for, there's a calamity specific chest down here that has a really good accessory I think I think um, I'm like vaguely remembering it's like the Luxor's gift or something like that so if you know honestly if we could find that that'd be really great but like look our summons are just like going around killing stuff now oh man I'm gonna have no problem whatsoever fighting stuff now we are we are a, a boss killing machine we're definitely just kind of like, I, like I said, I was like, you know, I'm going to take this mod a little slower. And then now I'm like, definitely in the next episode, I'm killing like three or four bosses just because these guys are incredible.